लास्ट डे So last day we have looked into the adapter proxy packet, right? Those three patterns we looked into. Yes. So then we can move to the so now comes uh, our pattern that is known as a bridge pattern. So again, this is one kind of structural pattern. So what it does it when you have a a class, right, uh, with lots of code, right, and there maybe you wanted to break that down into two separate hierarchical classes, large class. One is your abstraction, maybe an interface. Right, these classes need to be, uh, and there is like an implementation that we create for that. Okay, and uh, the benefit of this is that you can build them as a in parallel. Okay, for example, uh, what you have is like you have different kind of clients. So, for example, you have mobile client, web client, and a desktop application. Different client based on their uh, requirement or screen size, how they can display that data. Wanted to have like a separate API for them. Okay. So, what you're going to do is you're going to be creating interface for that, and you in the creator in the back end the implementation classes for them. Okay. And as you created the implementation class separately, you just uh, reach that particular requirement of the client using specific abstraction. So one API for the web client, one API for the mobile client, one API for the desktop client. OK, that's how we can build this. And there may be those can be used. Right? So, so that means our framework now can support multiple platform, correct? And your app can have right different kind of versions. Those are there, but they can be supported in the multiple. Frame. For example, we created GUI layer of the app. Now that particular GLA will be different for Windows, Mac, or Linux, right? And then that say your operating system API is different for each of them. Okay. So that's in like simple example for this. So now what we need to do if we wanted to implement the bridge pattern, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to be having a particular two layer of one will be your abstraction. That means an abstract class that's going to hold a interface, which is known as implementation class. And that interface having method one to three. And then there will be that particular, for that particular client, the abstraction will be having different features, uh, feature one, feature two, feature three, etc. And your implementation class have like a concrete implementation that may be specific for your client. So when you are basically client making call to the particular abstraction library, or it's been you know, provided to your client as a SDK, right? for each of the clients, then they are making that particular call on that particular feature. 
and based on that particular features, they are calling that particular interface, which may be calling to the external API. Another example that will be that based on the user role, I have different templates or different kind of a area. For example, I have administrative portal, which has like a different uh, pages or particular subset pages will be displayed to it. If the user comes, he's not going to see the administrative features that are there, right? And then a normal guest may not see the option to buy out and other things, right? So now to support this, you have like a single client, a single web page client. Now, based on the user load, you're going to be raising them as per your need. Okay. So let's see an example of this, and then we can understand it better. So here is the example of which So out here, you have an interface which having the functionality. One is say this is like a game model where you have the different uh, character like troopers who can move and who can do some attack options, right? Now, these troopers can be again part of different concrete implementation right so this is your interface or you can say this is like your abstraction and this class has been inherited which have like different option like weapons plates etc etc and they have implemented those particular feature as per their need right as per the particular features similarly here these weapons can be again and the legs can be again are different interfaces. Okay. So that means your client is going to be calling this interface trooper, and these are basically your data classes which holding the other implementation, so other interfaces. Okay. So these interfaces are going to be then further, you know inherited into the concrete class. So that means out here, your bridge abstraction is super, okay? And then your implementation is the strong super and other things. And then they can also have like a interfaces which can have like a concrete object that are there. One weapon can be right, another weapon can be flame over and the output can be back on etc etc so so the interface wise your basic features will be the base inter abstraction then you have common interface like weapon legs etc which can have like a concrete class so these two abstraction and the interface create your beach bag so here you don't have to here you have like a related classes like so for example if we try to, try to understand you have different playable characters and playable characters have a different kind of way correct so how to design this so playable characters are you know separate out in you know, their own implementation now as we done that, now the weapons they carry and uh, other physical attribute they have will be different for different playable characters, right? So then we are creating that particular interface like weapons and legs, which going to have like concrete implementation. That means it's a rifle or it's maybe athletic plates or something like that. And this too actually creates your beach pattern. So beach pattern, if you wanted to see, so related classes we have grouped together, but you have not 
put here rifle or etc so that gives you flexibility to arm this particular character with any kind of future implementation okay. so if i wanted to say how this will look like what is the bridges is first is the abstraction that you are doing so first abstraction that you are doing is open, right the base abstraction the concrete implementation of this on top of the team right and they can have different interfaces those are linked to this that means what kind of weapon they carry. And then underneath that, these weapons will have your child classes. Right. So now, using this three, we create a bridge pattern. Okay, so you have your abstraction, strong cooper and clean cooper, and the interface that is the weapon, and which can have like a concrete interfaces, right? And this, and here you can see that this three. So this is your abstraction. This is your abstraction. And then this is like an advanced abstraction. Okay. And these are your interfaces. And the below to that is your implementations. Similarly, if you wanted to have same example where you need to support mobile, web, and desktop GUI client. So you can have like a client, uh, you can have like a API class, say, so for example, you have uh, SDK API, that will be your abstraction. Now the specific like mobile SDK API, you have web SDK API, or you have the desktop SDK API. So you have advanced abstraction. Then there can be a different interfaces which are there, like right? your login API, which can have an implementation login for admin login for student login for teach okay this is how you can create your bridge pattern that allow you to go bridge between separate between the implementation and the abstraction and you can create your own implementation concrete implementation later on and here these two allow you to create a bridge between those larger classes now can be broken it up. So here the benefit is that you're not creating an object like rifle weapon, pinfire weapon, etc. like that. Or you are creating all the three, four classes. You're breaking down in the abstraction, then you're creating abstract advanced abstraction, then you are only creating the interfaces. And your advanced abstraction is only knowing about the Interface, they don't need to know about the concrete implementation that is there. Okay. Now, the bridge pattern, if you have understood, then let's go for a few other patterns that are there. So, at least we can complete this. Now, next comes the highway pattern. So what is uh, library pattern does is that it can allow you to create objects, more objects, okay, 
by taking out less amount of RAM by sharing the common state between the multiple objects. Okay. So what that means, right? Okay. Now, for example, say you wanted to create a similar uh, game solution if you kind of take, right? So, for example, you have a game, right, where there are uh, different particles for different things like weapons, etc., and that you need to draw on a particular canvas. Okay, and in that particular game, uh, the people can, the gamers can fire upon on the different target areas, right? So, target areas basically a particular weapon, a particular house or etc okay now so if you need to create those particles right independently so your game is your game virtual environment is built up of those colors those walls etc right so you can move them around as the user is moving and you can draw the particular canvas right now more and more object as the player is more around, more and more objects you have to create and render, right? And the more object you create and render, the more memory or RAM they take up. Okay. So instead of doing that, what you can do, you can define something like a state of those objects. Okay. And you create lightweight object, okay? Rather than creating multiple objects as the player is moving around within the game environment, it can store the state of unique state which can be mu mutable, which can be mutable, okay? Which can be changed, okay? So from the particles, we can create a moving particles, which are going to be having, uh, when you move the particle and draw the canvas, they basically change the different things, like which coordinate that is, what is the color of the particle, which speed is moving, etc. And then as you are repeating the state, so some of the state will be unique, for that particle, and some of the state will be repeated in nature. For example, say the wall color or the stripes will be the same. So one part of the state will be mutable. That can be changeable. Okay, mutable state. That means that is unique state, unique state to that particular object. So when you create a new object, that particular state you have to recreate or allocate the RAM for it. But you're going to create or set aside some of the static state that you're going to be using among the particular moving talent, moving particles. So thereby you are reducing the amount of RAM that you are taking. Okay. So now your RAM will be going down depending on how much you want to put into your movable part or changeable part and how much you want to have in your static part. Okay. So let's see an example. So what is happened is this flyway is also created with a five-way factor. Right. So flyweight is what going to have, it going to have two kinds of state or properties. One that get change, right? And one that not going to be change, that remain static, right? So unique state will be given access to, and that can be your unique state can be then modified right 
So now if you wanted to quickly create many of such a high number of objects, right? So the two states are unique state that is mutable and repeating state that is immutable. So that means shared between this particular objects. So in the game environment, as you move around, you have to create lots of objects. But you wanted to reduce the amount of memory, that particular RAM is limited, right? So what we're going to have, we're going to now create a class, right? Implementation class, flyway. And here you're going to have your mutable state that is unique to that particular object. You can let that public and you can change that which state is actually shared right which is immutable that should be remain private okay now normally in that we can know that we have like a factory design pattern so if you wanted to create a new object we generally use factory method or factory pattern right that's a factory pattern so with the five when you're going to be implementing we're going to be creating this object, but we're not going to be creating this object, right? If I need to create 5,000 object, I wanted to maybe wanted to change the state and I wanted to hold that 5,000 object out of that user viewpoint can view around like say 1,000 object at a time, right? So I got to create the 1,000 objects, okay? And as the user moves through, I'm going to be changing the light, shadow, etc. Right? Those are your repeated state or unique state for that particular uh, player point of view. Right? So, what is the flyway factory going to have? Flyway factory going to have a cache of the thousand objects instead of creating five thousand objects. And those thousand objects, what you're going to do is you're going to be only updating the current state as that user is moving around and the canvas around the user is being repainted. Okay. So it's going to be creating new object and putting into a cache. Cache is can be implemented just an array. And then it from the cache it's going to put and return that particular object from the cache. Okay. And for your game engine, it's going to have like a context object, which is going to have one particular flyweight interface reference. Okay. And from the context, it's going to have the two state, your repeatable state and your unique state. And based on the operation, what's going to happen? The unique state is going to be replaced, but repeated state or immutable state will not be. And then the flyway operation will be called and it will be passed with a unique state and the unique state will be updated within the flyweight and then that particular factory will be used to create the object or get a reference of the cache object and from the cache object then it's going to be creating the object if that object need to be created for the first time but it can be having that particular object being filter from the cache and only the mutable part or the unique state will be changed whether the repetitive state will be remain the same okay so again the purpose of flyway to create large section of object instead of uh, when you're creating that instead of creating 5000 object you create a cache only modify the values the you know change unique state there and use some of the common repetitive state, uh, unique state that you change and repetitive state you can have. And it is used with your private factory. Okay, now here you have the main file, right? Uh, so as I mentioned, it's going to create that many objects, okay? And then this particular method has been called. Direction facing is enum, which are that left or right. Okay. So then this is a flyweight that we are using. Sprites, and then this is basically nothing but your. 
object kind of a acting as a factory from that particular list and uh, here it returning the images out of here four five six images and it's returning a file object so based on that particular id so this is like a list of eight objects right and it's just returning that instead of creating object all of the object that is there okay so now here this is you don't change right so what is this state this state is is a immutable state or repetitive state and here you get the current sprite so you are getting the file and from the file you are getting direction left you are sending an image direction right you are sending another image so this is basically your operation so when the operation is happening so you are currently storing what is the direction that particular character is pointed to and then you can returning that particular stripe zero or stripe one without creating a new stripe object because your stripe zero and one is basically your cache so these are the only flyweight cache objects we are using whenever we doing we are just returning the few object reference that are there okay and here you can put other unique state for that particular object so by just using two objects you can create as many as 10000 objects that you need to support so out here this is a class it has non changeable state and then it has the cache and then from the cache this is the current operation it returns a file and from the direction left to right it returns the two files so initially it's been loaded with eight files so either left and right direction is returning one of the other file or the jpgs instead of creating 10000 record that are there okay so any question on the flyweight Why are you are using flyweight how can you create large set of object with very simple number of objects that are cached Okay. If not, then I think we can move to the next pattern. So this is known as your composite pattern. Okay. So what is the composite pattern? Uh, you know the composite concept. Right? This is basically the multiple objects are created together. Okay. And they works together as like a piece kind of structure. And they are can be, but they works with this structure, but as if they are individual objects. What do you mean by that? Say, for example, I have uh, placed a order, right? Right. So I have purchased a particular item. Now the order is an object. Okay. Order object is a composite object. What is that? It has an order ID, order state, right? Then it has the whether the order status is, then it has the individual items. So individual items are currently there. And what is their price? What is the tax? What is the your quantity that user has purchased? What is the invoice PDF link that user need to be shown? Right? What may be the other payment detail? What processor he has used to make that particular payment, etc. is been come together to represent 
a particular e-commerce order right so basically so if i need to say what is the price of that order then then i have to calculate each of the item prices include the tax multiply by that particular quantities each quantity price or sq price then i have to see whether the particular order has been given any coupon code or any discount code or any promotional code then whatever the value remains that becomes the order price okay so after this how are we going to be creating this how are we going to be representing that particular component structure Okay. So here you're going to have like a composite object. So for example, if you wanted to so there is like a structure where you have like a image editor and you have like a graphics option that is there. So you have to draw different shapes like dot, circle triangle etc right you have like a common draw method right and you have a common move method that you have implemented right so so you have like i say basic interface for graphics now you have like a compound graphics which is basically your composing which is holding an array of different graphics that is these children and there within the children it can add and remove one from that particular children and it can move around that particular graphics uh, pixelated icons as we are working in an image editor and it can redraw this okay so the basic concept out here you have a composite you have a component and the component have different leaf nodes right and your client is going to be interacting with the component say out here it's going to call the draw method so all the you know child objects that are there will be recreated okay and it will be using the composite object reference as it holds the different children's that is there right list of children and it can have like a get children for that particular index add remove move etc things like that. so let's see an example of this so this is our composite so from the previous example we have now having a squared right so squared is nothing but our composite right what is having it having a list of coupons or basically your list of leaf nodes or component right super storm super flame super etc are basically your uh, steel like structure which has been representing a class hierarchy now you have this constructor where you can take bar cards it can take any number of coupons okay and then it calls the unit from the to list it basically calling that now out here you have like different functions that can be called on the composite so you wanted to move the unit to x and y so each of the unit member you can move x and y that is there and you wanted to call the individual function on this so say our main method is a client right so here we have created one object Boa Fit and then Boa Fit has been copied over one, two, three, right? So that becomes make a squared of three person. Then we call that particular squared attack object. So then that particular individually, whatever operation you call, all on this operation, you can then those are being executed. So here you have say move. So all of them can be moved around. So here what you have, you have a interface structure which is represent different one specific type and different concrete uh, types that are there 
and here your squad is basically representing a composite with a list of different components. Here your squad is made up of different trooper or soldiers. And then on that, you can have different operations. Either you can move them forward, you can move them back, you can ask them to attack, you ask them to hold, and etc. So your squad is a composite example. And in the troopers interface hierarchy, you have this different kind of troopers that have been added. But both of the troopers are being supported by the operation that been supported on the squad. Okay. So now the question is, uh, where are we going to be using this pattern? So basically, there is, like I mentioned, there is like common interface, right? So you have like a uh, root interface, child interface, et cetera, et cetera. OK. And then you have a container, which is nothing but your composite of all this particular, this kind of a child. And this will let me create a recursive set of structure that resembles a tree, right? And then on the tree, I wanted to perform any operation. I can easily do that. Okay. So composite pattern we can use when we have like a, it allow us to create a common interface. Our composite allow us to create a common interface using which we can interacting with not only a single object, but on the multiple object together. Okay. On those interface implementing classes. What is the benefit of this? When you have like a hierarchical complex structure, and you wanted to perform polymorphic operation on this using recursion of that particular composite list, you can easily do that. Okay. And you can easily, you know, introduce another hierarchy type into your hierarchy list, right? Without breaking the individual code. All you have to do is implementing the common operation into the new type. And you can using the composite you can perform the recursive operation on the list of objects okay now it can be problematic when the different component that you're going to be add are not sharing many of the common features of functionality that you wanted to access using the composite so if they wanted to have that one feature that have been not been one function that may not been implemented in other places is not a generic enough, then this will actually create a over generalized component interface in terms of composite. And it can be harder to implement and harder to maintain. Okay. So what is a composite? Uh, what is a composite design pattern? If I can wrap it up. You have like a hierarchical structure. Now you wanted to perform common operation on those all of the concrete classes of that particular interface and child class the hierarchical structure. So instead of you know performing this operation individually on each of them, right? We can create kind of a, like a composite, and in the composite we can have like the common operation that are there. For example, that example we have started with is the order, right? Now, order is built up of, order is basically now a container or a composite. It has the interfaces with common operation, right? Create, update, I mean, update the, or uh, calculate the say, price, right? So then the calculate price will actually involve the calculation of all the price of the order item, and thereby you get return the total price, okay? Any question on the composite design pattern? If not, we can go to the last pattern within the structural pattern, which is known as your decorator pattern. Okay, so what is the decorator pattern? 
And from Java, can you give us some example or any framework, any example of decorator pattern? Any specific example you wanted to give from sublet also? OK, let's give you a very simple example. Say I have created a REST API, and the REST API is obviously, as we know, it uh, works over HTTP. And it have a HTTP request and HTTP response. Now, I have a given a task to uh, log the incoming request and outgoing response. OK. Normally, what I can do, I can, you know, now the problem is that when I'm going to be reading the request, uh, it's to be request once, the internal input stream or, or from the response, internal output stream, if I read it once, then the particular stream becomes blank. And that thing will not be go to my controller endpoint and it will be becoming an empty result, right? So in that case, what I can do, I can use the HTTP sublet request wrapper and HTTP sublet response wrapper, right? So I can extend from these classes. And normally in sublet, what you use, uh, we on normally in other you know programming languages or frameworks for web, we have a concept called interceptor or filter, right? So this is basically a logical code that been executed before or after or both of a particular endpoint when it is being called. OK. Now, this wrapper object is going to do what? Another example of this is, right, say, I have a certain response, right? And I wanted to compress the response before it goes out. So how can I do this? How can I compress the existing one? So I have to use a decoration around that. For the compression logic, I will be writing into the wrapper. And I'm going to be further compress the outcome that is there. I will set the header, HTTP header, that is the, what is the response or the content type is GG, right? And I can also compress the byte. I can take the byte of the response and I can compress that. Okay, and then return it back. So, and also what I can do when I'm, say, the previous example, when I'm logging the request and response, I'm going to read it, but I'm going to be, you know, also resetting that particular input stream or output stream. After my read is done, I can extract and I can do the logging. Okay. So, in simple terms, what is decorator does? It decorates one object, right? Decorator does is decorate one object. It's basically create a wrapper and add some logic or state to the wrapped up object. So here our example is HTTP sublet wrapper, HTTP uh, request, sublet request wrapper, and it's be sublet request, right? Similarly, on the response side, we have HTTP sublet response wrapper and HTTP sublet response. Okay. So it's basically decorate or add addition functionality without extending that particular class. OK, it's going to be wrapped. It's going to use that particular class within itself. And then perform this operation. So instead of inheritance, is basically using the aggregation. And we can create that particular decorator that is there. So from our 
implementation, what I can do, if I need to de have multiple decorator, I can create a base decorator. And there is like a interface, like in our case, it will be HTTPs, uh, HTTP request. And HTTP request has been irritated to HTTP servlet request. That is a concrete implementation. Now say we have like log, or gg compress right this kind of a different decorators are there right for the response thing okay so i can say base is to be sublet response decorator and that particular uh, object reference is going to hold is the http subject request and then based on that it can perform normal operation say decorate and then the concrete decorator will be called whichever i will use and then it will perform the additional operation on top of that okay another example like i have like a different data sources from where we are reading we can read from a csv file we can read from a xml file we can read from a json file right now how can i implement that i can create a common data source which has in a method called read read and parse so read it's going to read and it's going to parse into a common photo right so here we can have like a file data source xml data source or say json data source and there they have like a implementation and they have like a uh, path of that particular uh, file right and we have like a then there is like a decorator right or maybe you can say passing decorator of the data source right and then it will can pass that particular result by reading that either by an xml decorator or it can be your csv decorator or it can be your is in a json decorator and they can pass that, read and pass that into a particular class. So the portal that is there. Okay. So here the simple example is say one interface, some repository, right? And from that repository, you are getting some values and you are setting some values, okay? Now you have like a default repository that you have inherited into. Okay. You get the value or you can set the value. Then you have also having like a this interface has been having a like a logging operation. So this has been decorating that with another operation that is adding a log of that particular incoming parameter. So this is one decorator, right? which does a specific function that's locking, correct? Apart on the get and set. So it's modified that particular function. Another one is doing validation logic. So validation logic is checking whether we're in the parameter value you pass. It should not be greater than a particular maximum link that means supported. So out there, you have one interface that is repository then start tag repository and then you have like two decorators one is validation decoration so it it basically does is add the validation logic against on top of your values another one is doing is that logging repository logging the incoming report now how to use this so you created the default one then you have the particular decorator so this object right validation add is a decorator which holding the reference of the wrap up object similarly your logging decorator is logging this detail by holding the wrap up star now they can be also be changed right here the here the wrappers are changed first it's going to be log then it's going to be doing the validation right and then when you call this what happen is it basically goes inside it takes the first wrap object and then it's printed out. Then it calls that particular wrap object 
set method okay. or do some values there and then the other thing is doing is basically doing the validation for that okay. so they're going to be working in one after the another so we can create a decorator chain as well okay any question on the decorator pattern bridge pattern composite pattern flyweight pattern that you have discussed today No, sir. Okay. Fine. So today we have completed the structure pattern. So we're going to have another session daily on this. That will be our behavioral pattern. And after that, on day four, we're going to be having concurrency pattern. And the, another day, we're going to having microservice design patterns using Portal. Okay. Okay then, let us pause the recording.